So this battery airbrush by iBeauty, how long will the battery last and can it create some artwork? I'll find all that out in this video. Let's get into it right now. So to create this artwork, I'm gonna use the Bull Skull template. I've got a pre-mixed transparent gray. So I will be changing my airbrushes throughout. So I've just got it hooked up to a quick connect. So for obvious reasons, it's easier to mask flat when you're working on something like this. So I'm just gonna tack it into place using some mask tape. This is a rice paper masking tape which is pretty cool. And what I want to do now is protect my outer edges of the panel so that I don't get overspray on them. So I'm just using some ordinary copy paper. It's A4 and then what I want to do is mask it down so it doesn't move. Pretty much just for the first part of this design where I lay the first transparent black base down, that lighter one that I just showed you. Okay so now I'm ready for my first tone. I'm going to go ahead and switch on the battery unit. You can hear it stops because there's now enough pressure in there. Pop that in my pocket and just from a distance just going to lightly dust onto the template on those exposed sections and that's going to give me a basic outline. And I'd just like to thank iBeauty for sending out this unit and for sponsoring this video. You can find out more about this product or purchase it using the link in the description below. If you ever want to check with the template to see how dark you've gone, just use a blade and carefully lift it and you'll see that I've hardly sprayed on there at all. It's really subtle, so I can definitely do more. You can see how dark that color is. Might need to be a bit thinner, but let me go ahead and go a bit heavier with it. We'll wind the Mac valve out to get a little bit more PSI coming through. I'm just gonna darken off where those eye sockets are while I've got my template. Okay, now we can unmask. And there you go, we've got our outline. Darken off some of these areas. Virtually just dusting over, I'm gonna do a little bit of texturing in a minute. This transparent black is extremely thin as you can tell. You can hardly see it going on. So I'm going to go for something a bit stronger and a little bit darker so that I can better define it. So now grabbing the texture template, I'm just going to hold that on and move it around just to build a little bit of texture in here. Again, it's gonna be hard to see with this tone. But I will be adding more texture as well when I continue. So I wanna darken up this first tone. So this is my existing transparent black base. You can see it's extremely weak, but because it's got so much transparent base in there, it's flowing a lot thinner. So if you're not comfortable with using it, then you need to darken it up. Or the other option is that you use a gray. So you mix up an actual white with black and do different strengths of that. You can see now it's a lot darker. This is more like a mid-tone and then I'll go one darker tone. This one now is really gonna allow me to show you how to really shape this design. If you are using the greys, just keep in mind they're opaque. So they're gonna perform a little bit differently, but they will be easier to use. So adding some of that to the airbrush. I'll stick with the same airbrush at the moment that comes with the unit. It's obviously not gonna perform as well, but we'll see, it'll we'll work in the darkest spots first. So now the aim is to deepen those shadows and I'll also be adding more texture. So up nice and close where you want a nice sharp edge and then further away to dust it. Now because our template obviously has created a bit of a harsh edge there, that's working really well. If I can get that sort of depth coming through the eye socket. 
you can see it's still very thin and wanting to spider out so you still need lots of control to use these more transparent tones again they're not true transparents because I'm mixing them up using a transparent base however they're only going to go as dark as the base whereas a true transparent you can keep coating it it's going to go darker and darker and darker shading as well picking up on this outer edge so this little battery unit you can hear that kicking in so as I stop it turns off as soon as I press down for air it comes back on it is keeping up at the moment be interesting to see how long it lasts because I am airbrushing correct double action at the moment meaning I'm keeping that air press down so it's staying on quite a bit so I'm really putting it through its paces so I know a lot of you were asking questions after my initial video unboxing of this product how long the battery will last now the manufacturer is saying 45 minutes and 90 minutes to charge so we'll get to test that in this video so another question which was raised was regarding the psi and whether or not it was 32 psi as mentioned on the box from my test it's around 20 psi not 32 so i would suggest that this unit if you are going to get one that you use it with airbrushes that have that lower psi capacity like something like the neo the iwata microns you know they run really well at lower psi you could still use something like a eclipse or the gsi krios ps289 however you would need to over thin your paint but that said even though the psi is lower than what they've mentioned it's still able to keep up and perform and still achieve a great result and the portability factor is just so handy so after running my pressure test and noting that there was a significant difference in the psi i reached out to the supplier and just questioned him on it and this is his response hi carsten as per pressure i need to explain to you the pressure of the electromotor is really 30 to 32 psi but you know there is an auto air valve in our compressor that will stop automatically when pressure reaches 20 psi because 20 psi is the best situation for working time and lifetime so we set the pressure to reach 20 psi and then the compressor will stop automatically that's why when you test it only shows 20 psi hope my explanation is clear thank you clarence the sales manager at rebo air brush so this does clear up a few things and does make sense because you got more pressure coming out of the unit and you're only utilizing that 20 psi but that said personally i wouldn't put 30 to 32 psi on the box or the advertising as that could potentially mislead the customer into believing that they're getting a product that has got that output of 32 psi coming out of the airbrush directly so teeth are definitely difficult to do you can see i just splurted out there what i've done there is i've incorrectly used the double action because i didn't shut the paint off correctly the next time i press down you're going to get some paint coming out because it's stuck in the front of that nozzle so you always want to make sure that when you finish painting to return that trigger to the start position and always keep the air pressed on so paint on paint off Just deepening some of these shadows again going to come in with the much darker version of that transparent black so this one's just my underpainting and you want to sort of pick a light source and go from there so i've sort of got all my shadows running more on that bottom right which is suggestive of the light source being up here top left you can also obviously do a background and flip the image the other way with the template whatever you like you know run some fire off it but for this one i just thought keep it simple black and gray on a nice white aluminium composite panel would look effective again i'm still using that brush that comes with this unit so it does work 
It's obviously not as good as a branded brush, but considering that you're getting it with the unit and it's a reasonable price, you really can't complain. It even comes with the MAC valve, which does actually work quite well. Now I'm gonna come back in with the texture template. You'll really notice it now. Also be careful when you are dragging these sort of templates on a surface like the LU panel that you can sometimes scratch the panel. So just be wary of that. You could also use a eraser pencil on this, one of the Faber-Castells, and remove some of the paint to create the texturing. And what I'm talking about is this here. So yeah, you could go in here and just erase, maybe with the more aggressive one. And it's going to remove some of that paint very subtly because that's already cross-linked and dried. This is Trident paint that I'm using. You need to be a bit more aggressive with the eraser to erase Trident paint once it's dried. Whereas the Createx Illustration colors, they have a longer time frame of cross-linking. You can manipulate them for a longer period of time. Now, just to let you know, this is starting to get reasonably hot now. So I wouldn't say it's like burning hot, but you can feel it, you know, you're touching that. It's not like a kettle where you're gonna burn your hand, but it's quite warm. So it's almost getting too hot to leave in my pocket. I'm probably adding to the, the heat as well by having it in the pocket rather than having it standing on the bench. Been running for around about half an hour, just over. So I'm expecting it to stop anytime soon and then it'll need a recharge but we'll just keep moving while it's still got some power left now just doing some uneven dagger strokes along here just to give the horns a bit of texture Again, if you're not confident doing this freehand, like I like a bit of that overspray so that you're not getting the complete sharp edge. But if you want that as a definite sharp edge, then by all means you can grab the template and respray that horn. Deepening some of these shadows along here. And go ahead and do the other one. You see, it doesn't take much to shape it up. ahead and shape it a little bit more before I move on to that final darker tone and some highlights. Okay, so now we're, we're getting close to about the 40 minute mark of using this unit. And now this section here is actually so hot I can hardly touch it. Okay, so just be careful with that. I've had this in my pocket. Look, it's probably not ideal, but I thought I'd try it out. I'm gonna leave it maybe sitting on the bench for the remainder of the battery. We should be getting ready for a recharge, but just be wary that these metal parts get extremely hot, so keep that in mind if you are going to be using one of these. The rest of the unit is warm, like a little bit warmer to touch, but these, yes, they're quite hot. So I'm gonna go ahead and erase using the Faber-Castell 7057 eraser pencil, just to get some of those white highlights in there. That way I can get a more defined highlight and I also don't have to worry about blue shift because I'm erasing back into the white of the panel just removing that paint. So you can see the Trident has cross-linked, but I'm still able to come in and remove that. But the pink side, which is the softer one, isn't doing anything. If you do want to use white paint and you want to learn how to manage the blue shift, I'll pop a link to that video in the description below so you can check that out. If you go too bright somewhere, then 
you can always dust back over it. That's why I like to do my white highlights before my final tone. The other good thing about using something like this, as in the eraser pencil, is that you can see that the highlights aren't exactly perfectly smooth like they would be if you were using an airbrush. So that's just adding a bit more realism to the texture. some texture in here as well. I can dust back over that. You can see though even a little bit of those highlights making a big difference to the work. So for the final detailing, I'm going to use my Micron now, the CMC Plus. And what I'm going to do now is really detail the artwork with the final tone of black to up nice and close to get a really defined edge. You can see by coming out a bit further in your design, I'm cleaning up a little bit of that overspray, just in case you're wondering how to eliminate that. You could also mask it up to prevent any of that overspray happening when you're freehanding. The key obviously now is not to go over everything again. So this is your darker tone. You, you want to use it to shape your artwork. You don't want to just airbrush back over everything. You want that graduated tone. You can see I'm doing less where the highlights are and more on one edge. And you also don't want to sort of come in here and do a big harsh black edge because then it'll look a bit too cartoony, providing that you're going for more of a realistic appearance. So that's probably enough. You can see I've left my initial lighter tone there and then it's got these highlights there that I've scratched in and then it's darkening off. But I can still see some of the texture through there. It's not just a total solid dark shadow. That's up to you how you want to go about it. But I like to put the texturing in, dust back over it, but still make that visible. You can really see how well the Awada performs and it's absolutely no issue at all using it with this battery unit. I find out of all the brushes that I've tested, this one just flows the best. Again, if you're not confident fully freehand, then by all means grab the template to re-establish some of those sharper edges. You can see how less is more. So just gradually darkening certain areas. But not going overboard, not going too heavy. Again, darker on one of the edges. bit of shading and do the other eye socket. The seeing as we've still got a bit of power left, we go ahead and give this a bit of a drop shadow. So you only want to dust it lightly go too heavy. And I think we'll leave it there because it is
completely flat. So I think that'd be fairly accurate to the 45 minutes. I might have even got a little bit of extra time out of it, but pretty impressed with that. Got through the whole artwork on one charge. So even though this unit might have some slight limitations, it's definitely a super handy tool to add to your airbrushing arsenal. And to continue your learning, be sure to check out some of the other videos and playlists that I've got listed here. And until next time, go grab your airbrush, do some amazing artwork yourself, and I'll see you again very, very soon in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.